Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. A lot of new faces or familiar faces that we haven't seen for a while. Good to have all of you back. Especially you two. <laughs> Our prayer notes this week is for how to leap. Uh, Kay will take those notes when you get them finished and we'll be sure that we get them off to Alta. We have a birthday this week. Today, as a matter of fact, is the birthday of Judy Howler. She's not here, so who would like to lead that singing? Beth, you up to that? Where'd you go? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Judy. Happy birthday to you. We don't have an anniversary per se, but I wanted to uh, let you all know that the ninth, which would be, uh, what, Tuesday, I guess it is, that this would be the anniversary of Royce and Janice Berger. As you know, we lost Royce several months ago, and I'm mentioning this in the event that any of you uh, would like to reach out to her and just uh, tell her how much we uh, miss her, how much we think of her, and miss uh, both she and Royce. Did you say their anniversary is today? Can no, that's on the night. Tuesday. It's on the night, so it would be, uh, what, Tuesday, Tuesday, I think. Tuesday. Yeah, okay. Good news. Next week, you all get to come one hour earlier. Yeah, that's right. Next week is spring forward. So don't forget that. Otherwise, you're going to miss all the fun and fellowship that we have in this one hour. And the donuts, too. Spring forward. Spring forward. With or without donuts, we are going to spring forward. Today, or this week, marks the one year period that uh, we started this so-called sojourn for the, the COVID-19. A lot of things have happened uh, in that one year period, but we're beginning to see some very positive things in that the businesses are now opening up to whatever degree they wish to uh, here in the state of Texas. Uh, there's no mask uh, required, but it's still suggested. On behalf of the church, I think the policy has been made that we will continue to use social distancing. We will continue to use the mask uh, whenever and as much as possible. We don't want to run unnecessary risk. Uh, we need to give it a little bit more time, and I think that this is the, the thinking is, this is the prudent thing for us to be doing. Uh, however, it does feel good to be moving forward. I think all of us can agree on that. Do we have any uh, praises or prayer concerns for this week? Uh, yes? John Spellman is mm -hmm. John Spillman is in the hospital. Uh, he has a bleeding issue along oh, with yeah, some yeah. heart issues and they're doing testing. They can't find out where the bleeding's from. So he'll be in there, um, I, I don't know how long, but okay. Jane just told me. Uh, what? Uh, Providence. 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 Okay. Mike. I'm coming. I'm going to follow a little bit yeah. on the mic. Yeah. Yeah, I had a, a, a dear person I worked with uh, before I retired. She's a little engineer with me, and uh, her name was Roy Amir, uh, R-O-Y-A, and her last name is A-M-I-R. And last Friday night, uh, Friday a week ago, her husband went to sleep, 50 years old, did not wake up. Goodness. We attended, Paul and I attended a funeral in Houston this week, and... Uh, hard to say but she was unchurched so she asked me to do the graveside service and I, I gladly did 
It was not something I wanted to do, but something I, I loved her enough that I thought she was like my daughter at work. She's anyway. I just want to keep her. Uh, if you could pray for Roya, R O uh, R O Y A. She's going through a very difficult time because she has no children. She has no family other than her mother and her brother, and that's it. So it's it's that's a. She's going to go through some rough times in the days ahead. Thank, thank you, Donnie. Anyone else? Okay. There's a young couple uh, that's our neighbor in the suburbs of Moshin who have a little 18-month-old boy who has been diagnosed with a Wilms tumor, which is a malignant tumor of the kidneys, and he had metastatic lesions in his lungs too, and he's undergoing chemotherapy. And uh, apparently this little boy is just rolling through it like nothing's happened to him but it's a they're a great couple and uh, actually at one time he had kind of a uh, teenage years that were not the best in the world but he met the right woman and now they're a very good christian couple but uh, they're, uh, the father's name is zach cummins a little boy is Gus, and uh, uh, this type of cancer is really pretty susceptible to chemotherapy. Even though there are meds in the lungs, there's still a good chance that he could get a cure. So prayers will be appreciated in that regard. Yeah, I, I remember having met Zach. That's very Thank you. I just want to thank the class for all the prayers, the cars, calls, and the cards. Prayer does work. I called Beth Thursday after I left the doctor's office, and my platelets were up to 76, and she answered the phone, and I said, prayer works. <laughs> so, just and want to thank all of you. I appreciate it. Think of you often. Mr. <coughs> Senior. And she knew who it was, right? <laughs> Her? While we're thanking, I want to thank the class, everyone, for the prayer notes this past week. Some of you folks write uh, prayer notes that bring tears to your eyes. They're just good, and they make you feel good. So thank, thank those that wrote a note. I appreciate them very much. Yeah, I forgot to give it mine. We won't make you read it out loud. <laughs> Any others? <laughs> yes, Bill. Some of those folks at Providence are really grateful to y'all. I got those cards I got from y'all, and I had them out where I could see them all the time, and I can tell the those folks at Providence were really blessed. They got to read them right out where they were, so thank you for that. That's great. I saw a very, very interesting program earlier this morning, or part of it, uh, on uh, CNBC where they were interviewing uh, six people who were the first line uh, defense on the COVID uh, for the last year and they were talking about their experiences and if you want to hear something moving and extremely deep in terms of their thought and their reaction and what they've learned from this that was the most amazing 20 minutes I've ever seen on television mm -hmm. really be thankful for it Okay, no others. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this beautiful sunshine day. We thank you for all of the blessings that you give us, even those that we see and the ones that we don't see. We ask your special care upon uh, John Spillman upon Raya Amir and her family, upon Zach and Gus, and Gus, rather. We also give thanks to the recognition by Mary Jane of her and Bill for his comments. It's amazing that when we come here, we see friends but we also meet Jesus. 
in this class. Thank you, Lord, for leading us forward for the hope that you continue to send our way, that things will be better. Teach us to rely upon your will and your way. Come, Holy Spirit, to strengthen us in our faith and our understanding and to see the examples that your Son brought us here on earth. We pray for your grace, your peace. Thank you for Johnny's preparation for his message each and every week. Guide us, direct us all as we go home to our families, to our friends. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, for your leadership. Thank you for your faith and your love for Jesus. It shows big time. Uh, great to have Lynn Amos back, Mary Jane. It's been a long time, Mary. Uh, Donnie, what you did for your friend uh, <clears throat> was wonderful. And, <clears throat> It's probably one of the hardest things you've ever done. Uh, I was asked to do the same thing, and my first response before it came out of my mouth was no, not only no, but and before I could say it, the Holy Spirit I said, you're going to do it, and you're going to tell them it'll be an honor. And uh, we did. It isn't easy, but that's some the fun times, you know, when you look back on it. Uh, a sign in a shoe repair store in Vancouver that read, we will heal you, we will save your soul, and we will even die for you. <laughs> D-Y-E. That's <good. laughs> An optometrist office. If you don't see what you're looking for, you came to the right place. <laughs> On a plumber's truck, we repair what your husband fixed. <laughs> Guilty. Mm -hmm. On an electrician's truck, let us remove your shorts. <laughs> <laughs> On another plumber's truck, don't sleep with a drip. Call your plumber. <laughs> Outside a muffler shop, no appointment necessary. We hear you coming. <laughs> in a veterinarian's waiting room, be back in five minutes. Sit, stay. <laughs> In the front yard of a funeral home, drive carefully, we'll wait. In a Chicago radiator shop, best place in town to take a leak. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dudley, I know you uh, offended you. Okay, a sign on the back of a septic tank truck. Caution, this truck is full of political promises. <laughs> Those were all pretty clean. Go in my name. We're going to kind of talk about this today. Go in my name because you believe others will know that I live. It isn't easy. Starting next week, we're going to do a little Easter series for three weeks, maybe four weeks. Easter is on April 4th, so we'll, uh, we'll try to put it in like a three-week 
period. I want two readers, just a little bit long. Um, 1 Peter 3, uh, 8 through 22. So I need a reader that will read 8 through 12. 3, 8 through 12, and then 13 through 22. Okay, Donnie, you'll read, what, 8 through 12 in a minute? Yeah, I got it. In a second, okay. And then who'll read 13 through 22? Well okay, Bill. All right. Uh, loving people. This is a lot easier than last week, let me tell you. If you were here last week, we touched on some very controversial verses. Uh, I'm not going to go back there, okay. Uh, I put this up every Sunday just because I like it. Sometimes you don't know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. Okay, before we get into some of these questions, uh, Peter understood that many of his followers were enduring trials and persecution simply for being Christians. We, that's hard for me to imagine, but they've dealt with this every day, every hour of their life. Um, however, it was something else entirely to suffer for living like a Christian in front of a world that was often hostile to the gospel. And in this section, Peter calls on believers to not only do good in the midst of their suffering, and thus model the example of Christ to others, but to also be prepared, be prepared to explain the hope of Jesus to others. Be prepared, one of the key words. To a watching world, the perseverance of a Christian in the face of persecution would have caused much curiosity. Peter wanted believers to be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have. That's 15th verse. And in this way, draw others into the family of God. Um, let's start with one question and then we'll read the scripture. Think about a time when someone demonstrated Christ's love to you in a practical way. You think it cost the person to help you? In what ways is that person's gesture affected the way you notice and respond to other people's needs? Hmm. A time when someone demonstrated Christ's love to you in a practical way. Simple question, but deep. Beth? It's happened to us several times, and I know it has happened in this class. It's when you have surgery or you're ill, and someone brings food and comfort to you. Very good example. Right, uh, Donnie, behind you, Mike. Many years ago, I was unemployed. It was the big oil bust of the 80s. And uh, I mean, I couldn't rub two nickels together. And our Sunday school class had a trip to New Brunswick. I couldn't even afford the gas. Well, they paid for the gas, paid for our hotel, the whole thing. And I mean, to me, that just touched me. It just showed what Christian love was all about. Yeah. Just be there, we'll take care of it. We'll get you there financially. Don't worry about it, just show up. Uh, you feel indebted forever on something like that, you know? Beth? I'm sorry, I don't mean to dominate, but uh, during the ice storm, two people from our church, Pat and Bill Mears, the ceiling collapsed in their bedroom. 
and Suzanne Ramsdale talked to the handbell choir and because Pat and Bill were having to stay in a hotel and they she talked to us about helping them with the expenses and she asked for $250 and the handbell choir was only 14 raised 460 happens over and over and over again. Okay, let's read this scripture. Uh, Donna, you're going to read the first uh, 8 through 12, I think? Correct. Please. Start with verse 8. Finally, all of you live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic, love. Be sympathetic, love as brothers. Be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil. Sorry, I had to turn the page. Oh, you got it? Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but be a blessing because to this you were called to do so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and the ears of the attentive to their prayers. Be the face of the Lord, be the face of the Lord is against those, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. To who do evil, very good. Okay, Bill. Through 22, John. Yeah, 13 through 22. Okay. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is right? But even if you do suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, or be troubled. But in your hearts, reverence Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who calls you to account for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. And keep your conscience clear, so that when you are abused, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing right, if there should be God's will, than for doing wrong. For Christ also died for sins once and for all, the righteous and the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly did not obey, when Christ's face, God's patience waited in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. Very good. Thank you, Bill. First question, how, how, does, how does Peter say that believers in Christ are to treat one another? With compassion. With what? Compassion. Compassion. Sympathy. Sympathy. Humbleness. Humbleness. Love. Be a blessing. Be a blessing. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> How has our church, not just any church, but our church, been an example of Christian behavior in the community? I started to print Friday's message from Ryan out so I could read what all happened just this past week, what our church did in the community. It was, I mean, I was kind of blown away with all the different things we did. I mean, yeah, meals on wheels, that's normal. There's some really incredible stuff. Did everybody, does everybody get the Friday yeah. deal for the email from Ron? <clears throat> Anybody want to add to that? I mean, some of the things that kind of struck you that our church did just this week? The blood buckets. Yeah, the, the, the buckets that we, how many did we start with? Five or six hundred, something like that? Maybe more than that. That was not what they started okay. with. Uh, but also the water they yeah. delivered to Mahaya. Yeah, we took, uh, you know, Mahaya had a serious water problem, <coughs> um, public water problem, and 
many people responded all over. But we, just one church, took water. I don't know how much it made any difference, but, you know, uh, we did our little part. Uh, anyway, it's, our church is uh, involved big time. Okay. Johnny. I'm sorry. No, you're not. You're one. <laughs> well, now I'm going to do this. <laughs> Um, I don't know about you, but it, it really just warms my heart to know that our age group used to be the people who were totally participating in the things that we were just talking about that our church does. And so many of us don't feel like we're able right now to do that. So it's encouraging to see that the younger generations who are in this church are stepping up and doing so many wonderful things. And um, I just am so thankful for that. That's a good point. Mary Jane, I'm sorry, Gary. Everybody in here can't sit on the finance committee, and too many people, but I've been on it for a long time. And from there, you see all the different things that the church is doing, and it is, it's really, really amazing. In the last 30 years, our annual budget has gone from 850000 a year to $3.2 I think, now. And more significantly, maybe, is that we do about $800,000 worth of ministries that is outside of the budget every year that is not a budget line item. So that really pushes our total budget to about four million. But it is incredible to see what the people of this church do, the giving that they give. Our, our giving has not, it is not down during the, the virus time, but it's right in line with the previous year. I don't know how that happens, except it's a God thing. It is very good, Mary Jane. I just want to say a prayer, and we don't know how many prayers are lifted up for our community, our state, our nation, our leaders. We just need to keep praying for all of it. Why, why does why does Peter in this in this particular message why, why does he encourage us to respond with gentleness and respect to others even when they're ugly to us when they shame us when they talk about us and maybe maybe probably not so often you hear it face to face, but you'll hear it second hand or third hand. Why does Peter encourage you to respond with gentleness and respect? So hard to do, Donnie. Because that's how they just react. That's how Jesus was. I'm not that bad. He gave me the knowledge. I said that's how Jesus was. That's what Jesus did. Uh, look, his, his enemies. He loved his enemies. And then, that's what Peter's telling us to do. Over and over and over again. He did it through his entire ministry. Uh, it was hard then for his followers to hmm, maybe accept that and do it themselves. It's hard today, 2,000 plus years, uh, to sometimes treat people with gentleness and maybe respect or, uh, yeah, respect. Uh, I think, um, too, I was thinking about the one. Forgot, forgot about Can you imagine hanging on a cross and asking the Father to forgive them for they know not what they do? No. 
Betty. Hang on. <laughs> well, in that in a Bible study we're doing, that it, you know, one of the things says that He created us in His likeness, and His hope is that we will become more like Him, and hopefully we do each day. And so that is what we know he would want for us to do, is to respond with gentleness and respect and love and caring and compassion and sympathy. Mm -hmm. Very good. Amen. Well, Thank I was you. just wondering if he was doing it. <laughs> okay, another question. Why is it important to be prepared? That's the key word here, to give an answer about the hope you have found in Christ, verse 15, if you want to go back and look at it. When have you been asked to offer this answer? Be prepared. You have a response. It comes from your heart, not just from memory. Why is that so important? When you've been challenged, when you, you know, <clears throat> I mean, I would like to think that every one of us at some point in our lives have been asked or questioned why we do what we do. Why do you believe in this Jesus guy? Uh, man, you just, how much time have you got? You know, let's say you've got 15 seconds to respond. What's going to be your response? Okay, let me hear from you. He responds to our Wait, experiences. Come out. Just come out. Come out. Come out. Get, we gotta get Mike over here. Mike, the back man. People respond better to our experiences and our own life experiences than they do to anything they read in a book. Experiences. Mm-hmm. Very well said. Mike. I had many times in my experience over the years of uh, seeing a fetal heart rate drop and the parents being so anguished and I found it just, I didn't have an answer except I said, I would say, you know, just trust and believe and things will work out and they do. And they did. Mm -hmm. Well said. In addition to what was said over here a moment ago, verse 16 in my Bible says, keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. What, what are you reading from? What, what? Is anybody, can I be? No, I don't mean. I'm reading from verse 16. Okay, I'm sorry. In uh, chapter 3. Of what we're okay, talking, okay. What we're 15, that's what we're, we're supposed to be focused on here. Very good, thank you. Uh, I think we've answered this. Let me, uh, let me read this real quick. This came from uh, Max Licato's book, The Eye of the Storm. One of his cool books. In our house, we call 5 p.m. the Piranha Hour. It was the time of day when everyone wanted a piece of mom. Sarah, the baby, was hungry. Andrea wanted mom to read her a book, and Jenny wanted help with her homework. And I, the ever-loving, ever-sensitive husband, wanted the nylon to drop everything and talk to me about my day. When is your piranha? When the people in your world demand much and offer little, every boss 
is that a day in which the request outnumber the results. There's not a business person alive that hasn't groaned as an armada of assignments docks at his or her desk. For the teacher, the piranha hour often begins when the first student enters and ends when the last student leaves. Piranha hours. Parents have them, bosses endure them, secretaries dread them, teachers are besieged by them, and Jesus taught us how to live through them successfully. When hands extended and voices demanded, Jesus responded with love. He did so because the code within him disarmed the alarm. I like that. The code is worth noting. People are precious. I can hear someone raising an objection to this point, yes, but it was easier for Jesus. He was God. He could do more than I can. After all, he was divine. True, Jesus was equally God and man. But don't be too quick to dismiss what he did. Consider his living response from another angle. Consider that along with his holy strength, he also had a holy awareness. Jesus knew the hearts of each person. He knew why they were there and what they would do. Scary. Don't be too quick to attribute Jesus' compassion to his divinity. Remember both sides. For each time Jesus healed, he had to overlook the future and the past. Something, by the way, that he still does. Have you noticed that God doesn't ask you to prove that you will put your salary to good use? Have you noticed that God doesn't turn off your oxygen supply when you misuse his gifts? Aren't you glad that God doesn't give you only that which you remember to thank him for? Has it been a while since you thank God for your spleen? <laughs> Me too. But, but I still have one. You better thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I can assure you I've never thanked God for my spleen, okay? I've thanked you for my liver. <laughs> God's goodness is spurred by his nature, not by his worthiness. Oh, boy. Uh, when is your piranha hour? What demands does time bring? What, what are some of the ways you have found the, found the strength to love people even when they have nothing to give in return? So hard to do. Do you, have we outgrown piranha hours? We have them. They're just maybe not as vicious. Is that a good word as they used to be maybe when everybody wants a piece of you? And you just want to say, hey, time out. Um, Tricia, hang on. That's when it's good to be retired, by the way. I know you get tired of hearing stories about prison, but that's what this makes me think of. Um, when the little team that I get to go with to the 32 women in prison in Gatesville, when we arrive, the women are standing up, clapping and welcoming us, and they each want to corner us and have time to ask for prayer needs that they have. Um, and, and I mean, it's, it's one of those piranha times that we have nothing to offer except the love that the Lord has given us for them. And it, it's just a, such a different thing than with your family and your friends, because you know God gets all the credit for anything that you can give to people who are that desperate for love. So 
It's a fun piranha hour. Very good. Time out just for a second to thank Mike for handling the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know of any other way to do it to, to get it to this recording other, you know, uh, properly. It's got to be recorded with a mic help, a handheld mic. So, uh, okay, let's go back to the original question. Piranha Hour. Give me some examples in your life today. We don't have them? Beth, I think of the kitchen because everything has to get done right about the same time, right? This is bubbling, that's boiling, this is cooking, and this is needs to be put in and whatever. Beth? Recently, our piranha hour, and I say we, is because our property is up for sale. <clears throat> They're supposed to give us 24 hours notice to come and look, and the most we've gotten is four. <laughs> so that is definitely a piranha hour trying to get things ready for these people to come in who haven't obeyed the rules. <clears throat> and Herb had to do it all by himself last Wednesday, and he did a magnificent job. Of course. Of course. She wants you to do it again, Herb. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, <darling. laughs> Some people better just can't read, okay? It's like some people shouldn't be driving. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go there, okay. <laughs> Others, piranha hours, we have them. Like I said, I don't think they're quite as of the magnitude that maybe we had them 30 years ago, or whether we were working or teachers, for example, and uh, teachers in our life or Started with my wife, my daughter. I mean, we, we uh, my sisters, there's always been a teacher in my life, and I know they get home, they're tired. I don't care what grade it is, it's strenuous. And we they'll never get the credit uh, that they deserve. I don't know where I'm going with all that, but anyway. Um, and I remember I was very guilty, and I'll admit it again, and I've admitted it over the years, but. When I would get home from work, the first thing Trisha wanted to know is how did my day go? And the last thing I wanted to do is repeat any part of it. <laughs> and she didn't, I don't think she fully grasped the, why I didn't want to talk about it again, because it was, it wasn't fun, it was hell. I don't want to come home, I want to have a glass of wine and talk about flowers and birds and not what, you know. Not every day was that way, but a lot of days were just strenuous, and she knew when to kind of <coughs> back off, okay? Uh, I mean, I'm looking over here at two ex-beer guys. Can you imagine one day in their life they didn't sell one beer? <laughs> that would have been a piranha day. <laughs> Mike. Johnny, you and Jean were on the same page. You'd come home just dragging in, and I'd want to know everything that happened. And being a man of few words anyway, he'd just look at me, and I knew that look. And then came the glass of wine, and I'd try and shut up. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Very well said. <clears throat> the Christian life is often uh, counter okay, to human instincts. In our natural state, we humans want to return evil for evil. We believe that what goes around comes around. We want to give it an extra shove. 
when it goes by. However, if we're going to follow Jesus, we can't follow our natural instincts. Man, that's hard. If we're going to obey Jesus' command to love others, we have to ignore our inclination to have things our way. Mm. Jesus goes beyond his role as our example. He also empowers us to love beyond what we could ever do in our own strength. He also empowers us to love beyond what we could ever do in our own strength. In other words, give it to him. And as I used to like to say, I like to drive. You're supposed to sit shotgun and let him drive. That's hard for me to do, okay? Or sit in the back seat and let someone drive. I, no, I like to drive. And that applies to everything I do. And so, you know, that's not how we're supposed, we're supposed to say, Jesus, I need, I need for you to take over. I, I, I don't think I can get from here to there. I, I need your help. Let me tell you, he's there. He's always there for you. Um, it's still a struggle for me. So, uh, Strong will, whatever you call it. Hard-headedness, that comes from East Texas. Okay. Where? Okay. Let's close in prayer. Father God, thank you for uh, messages and uh, lessons that uh, get us get us thinking, um, get us maybe more on track, uh, reminding us of what we are supposed to do uh, and not what's comfortable sometimes. Um, it's so easy to do it our way. And sometimes it's difficult to let go and let him take it. Help us with that, Father. Uh, uh, you, uh, you're always there. You're an incredible uh, God, and we thank you for your son, Jesus. And the uh, Easter season that we uh, celebrate, yeah, it's hard to say celebrate a death. But that's what Good Friday is all about. Father, we thank you for uh, this church. We thank you for its leadership. We thank you for this class and the uh, wonderful uh, hearts and souls that we have here. Uh, Father, we thank you for you. It's in your special and beautiful name that we pray. Amen.